present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. It happens to be May now. Whoa. The merry month of May. May flowers. Cinco de Mayo week. Ooh. Happy Cinco de Mayo week. It's not Cinco de Mayo Day. today. It's yeah. Saturday, but it will be Cinco de Mayo this week. May the 5th. And uh, I just want to give a shout out and a salute to all um, Mexican Americans and people in Mexico for your holiday. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I, I will play a little mariachi. Oh, I love mariachi. Well, uh, where's this? Guadalajara? Guadalajara. Gotta go real high. Gotta go real high with those trumps. You know I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a lot of heat for doing this. Uh, the, my friends it's are gonna make very professional. My friends, how did it sound? Great. My friends They're are not gonna, very professional. My friends are gonna mock me. Oh yeah. No, your friends won't mock you. you know what I mean? a real, okay. A real friend won't mock you. Uh, yeah, yeah, and but you if, understand spontaneity. But if it's something like real Stupid hilarious, thing. like if I was swinging my Persian clubs wearing a baby pajamas with a bonnet on my head and a pacifier, I don't care how close your friends are, they will mock me. <laughs> so anyway, let me get. Or the, they will say, "What the hell were you thinking? What the fuck? What are you doing? What the hell are you doing, James? <laughs> you out of your mind?" Have you lost your mind? Here, let me, let me... Lost it? I never found it. Let me do a little levity bells, because it was funny, though. All right, formalities. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet <laughs> talk radio station on the planet, and I am here with my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm ready for a nap. Already. <sighs> well, I took a Benadryl. Uh, get, no, oh, oh, hold on. And I might be Why ready for a nap. Why not take half of one? Huh? Why not take half of one and see if that does it? Well, I could have, I could have taken the, um, like I normally do, the homeopathic allergy tablets under under my tongue sublingually, and uh, but I was behind. I was in a hurry to get here. I was I was behind time wise, and uh, I was afraid that um, I needed something strong because I knew I was doing the show, and I didn't want to take a chance but, just but, in case the homeopathic formula. But what I'm saying is, yeah. if the whole one makes you too tired, try a half of one, see if that works. Well, I do have a pill cutter. There you go. My tea is exceptionally aromatic. Uh-oh. Because not only do I have the imported chai in here. Chai chai. I have peppermint. Peppermint. I have fresh, one whole fresh lemon squeezed and, ah. and the rind is in there because the rind is of citrus fruits are very high in nutritional value sometimes more than the juice however and, they and have other things oolong tea stinging nettles uh yerba mate uh i got other things in there what were you gonna say pesticides i took care of that okay i soaked the lemons for a long time which i didn't have to in water uh, uh, some baking soda, some hydrogen peroxide, and white vinegar. Ah, okay. All three, my friends. All right, good. Uh, you, I know. I'm How right. was that zest cut up? Was it the... Uh... No, what I did was I cut the lemon in half. I took the seeds out. I, I got my wooden, uh, you know, old-fashioned... Yeah, squeezer. Yeah, I went... 
right into the tea and then I just put the the scooped out half a rind zest into All right, it's not the in percolator there. part oh, okay, and I did it to the other half. I got took it. the seeds out and went squeeze, got it. you know. Now that, if you had a rasp. It's wooden, you know, you turn it and it gets all the pulp and. Yeah, if you had a rasp, you could. You mean if I talk like this? No, you could scrape, I, scrape it into and make a zest instead of the Oh, pulp. I can, yeah, well I figure it's for tea purposes. It, it was yeah. not, it was not a recipe. But that way, you know. you'd maybe have a little bit in each cup, rather than leaving the well, whole thing inside the percolator. I see, I see lemon pulp, but oh, yeah? well, you know, the zest will, will, um, I will get all the value out of the zest because as I, you know, I don't, I don't knock off the entire big stainless steel Presto percolator in one day. Maybe oh, yeah. okay. maybe one or two days. I mean, I mean maybe two or three days. So and every day you got iced tea. Well, I could do that. Every yeah. time I repercolate it, it's drawing more out of the whatever's in there, the bags of other herbs, the zest. Mm -hmm. You like you just say zest because you like the, the way the word sounds. Instead I of hate zest. instead of skin, I instead hate of zest. rind. Oh, you don't like it. It's just a matter of uh, size. Well, the pieces are much, much smaller. That's it tastes right. awesome. Well, it tastes awesome. And as it long as the taste is And there. it tastes, as far as the lemon goes, the fresh lemon with the, with the rind tastes better than the concentrated lemon juice in a bottle. Get out of here with that chemical crap! Well, there's a preservative in the bottle. There's chemicals. Read the gosh darn label. Well, I'm convinced. And you know, limes are no slouch either. Limes are good too. But very expensive. Limes are cheaper than lemons. No way. They always been. Better check them. Unless they jacked up the price Things of limes. Things have changed as far as I know. But lemons are very medicinal. Um, they're... It's... So, yeah. Supposedly, they help with kidney stones too. To drink detox, it in the morning. Detox, you know? detox, detox. The 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 oil of lemon in the the oil of the lemon. I'm sorry. The lemon oil in the rind has a very powerful cancer cell destroying ability. And it also, uh, I, it also uh, is gets rid of fleas on the cat. Just Google. Put it on. Lemons. Uh, um, Lemon. Just Google the uh, nutritional or the health value of lemons. It'll, it'll, ton of stuff will come mm -hmm. up. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Natural News is a good website. Uh, Live Strong is good. Okay, now I'm gonna do a quick shout out because I like to get the formalities over with. I want to say greetings mm -hmm. to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. I would like to say, um, uh, I would like to give a shout out to my new friend and a fantastic, super intelligent, well diversified wizard, whiz kid uh, from uh, originally from uh, Baghdad, Iraq, <coughs> uh, Russia Youssef, Russia, Russia Youssef. I say hello to you and welcome to my my uh, largest groups. Uh, you are a tremendous asset to those groups. Um, <clears throat> also, Ken Thiessen, KT Training to Win, Akara USA, Boca Raton, Florida, former WWE star Ken Thiessen, and all my administrators of my Facebook groups, uh, Jean-Luc Odon, Justin Dana Spears, <laughs> Uh, J. Cruz, uh, Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, Anthony Laura. I guess that's that's all of them. Okay, I don't want to leave anybody out. Welcome, and I appreciate your great work to all my administrators. Uh, and that's it. That should be it. Uh, oh, 
And a shout out to the personal trainer and nutritional consultant of uh, of the Northeast, uh, Mr. Mario Petrus. Okay, he has uh, awesome credentials. Okay, Petrus Fitness, his new Facebook page. Check it out. All right, now, <clears throat> being that it's the beginning of May, May second, right? Yeah. May second. 2015, Saturday afternoon. That's why I'm doing all this fancy stuff. You know, because May is supposed to be, you know, the real springtime when flowers come out. The tulips are already out. Um, if we have a, a, a cool spring, tulips will last longer. If we have a hot spring, tulips will last maybe a couple weeks. You know. Anyway, uh, where are we? Oh, let me get this over. Chisler's Hall of Shame. Oh, I thought we were going to have ice cream. You thought this was full? Yeah. Rich and creamy forbidden chocolate. You expect Whoa. this to last in my house for more than two days? Two days. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Shame on you. Shame. It's not just this company. It's all of them. Shame on you. Friendly's Ice Cream Company. And also, shame on you. Turkey Hill. Beatty's. Briars. Uh, um, am I leaving anybody out? Yeah. Um, Turkey Hill, Edie's, Briars. Well, Ben, ben and Jerry's is smaller. Than well, they've always they've smaller. always been a pint. Yeah. Shame on all of you, and particularly shame on corporate America and the American food industry for shrinking down the size of the ice cream container again. I knew this was going to happen. Once they get away with the first shrink, when I was a kid. All these ice creams and containers were a half gallon, by the way. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Now they're they they're all the way down to one point five quarts. One point four. That's that's uh, 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 which is one point four two liters. One point five quarts. It's almost a quart. What what is it going to do? Shrink down to a a the size of a shot glass? I mean, come on, give me a break. And guess what? The price hasn't changed. It, the price hasn't gone down. No. So this is why I hate, I despise with a passion corporate America. I despise the corporate American CEO. You are scum. All of you. Peter Brabeck of Nestle's. Every stinking one of you are pieces of shit. Capitalism is the devil's economics. It is proven to be. Look at this, 1.5 quarts of this shit. Friendlies. Got that? I'm sorry, God. one and a half for you lay people that don't know what 0.5 is. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I, you got it. Yeah. Friendlies. You know what it is. Friendlies. It ain't no word. I wasn't friendly when I saw the size shrinkage of the container, believe me. Yeah, friendlies, all right? But they all do it. They're all doing it, bastards. You get a got away with Son it. of a bitch. Because why? Because all the scoundrels in America, in, in America, America, America today, none of them are held accountable for anything they do. That's a big problem, isn't it? And that is all part of capitalism in a conch shell. Our new series, capitalism in a conch shell. None are held accountable for any wrongdoing in the United States of America. Any comments on this uh, sh ever shrinking product container? Thing? Well, I don't know about ever shrinking, but last night I saw on uh, Facebook, I don't know if it was your group or if they have another group. Uh, I, it might have been the one about this is about food. All about food. Everything is food. Everything is food. That's yours, right? Yep. Well, yes, some sir. people were showing hot dogs last night. I don't think it was mine. And I'm going to tell you something. Every one of those dogs looked like shit. I wouldn't trust 
any supermarket hot dog. No, no, these were out out dogs. Buying out dogs somewhere. Well, what do you think? The, what do you think a hot dog stand uses? Say Brats, and one guy Thomans. Was, well, one guy was uh, comparing uh, Rutz Huts. Nathan's. Oh, you mean uh, establishments? Yes. Not necessarily Sam. what's in the hot dog, but what what is the hottest hot dog? No, you go to the establishment, you get the hot dog on a roll, and some you load it down with all kinds of relishes. Well, that's why they load it stuff. down. <laughs> They you know? lowered it down because you got damn roadkill in the damn hot dog, man. The, the tube steak is... They all look terrible. Listen, you don't want to know, believe me, all these hot dogs, all these companies, uh, Cons, I think, is that what it's called? Best, Nathan's, Thuman's, Sabretts, the Ballpark Franks. And by the way, Cal all, all of them except the kosher hot dogs, which I give two thumbs up for the kosher hot dogs. When they're on sale, I'll eat them. But I wouldn't eat any other supermarket hot dog. I'm sorry, go ahead. Callahan's. I remember them. Is now in a building in Norwood. No they, longer in the truck. They're trying to make a comeback. That's it. Oh so big, oh so good is their slogan. It, it, they, Callahan's is a local, it was a local landmark here in uh, northern New Jersey at one time. And uh, they they were known for their gigantic hot dogs. But the damn bun was standard size. And what used to happen with me is the bun used to fall apart. Once I started putting sauerkraut, mustard, relish. Yeah, you the, had the, like five, four inches sticking out the top of the bun and the bottom of well, the bun. Well, it, 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 it soaked. It Once it soaked into oh, the okay. bun, the bun was no more. It just, did they just, the, what were they, did they boil theirs? I mean, I haven't been there in years and you years. You know, I don't remember. Years. I know Rutz Hut deep fries theirs. Yes, yes. That's their Se mark, secret, if you want to yeah. call it that. But And they're famous for their big uh, deep fried onion rings. If you are a, a fried onion ring fan, which you are not, right? Ooh. I happen to like them, but not, not with a lot of breading on it. But uh. well, let me tell you something. The best thing to deep fry with is lard. That is your best all around at health wise. And <clears throat> but the lard has to be very hot. The secret to deep frying, and I explained it, <clears throat> this to, uh, what was his name, uh, Matt Dishman from Tennessee. I explained it to him. I says, the reason why you're not reproducing your grandmother's uh, oh, yeah. deep fried southern cooking is because you got to get that fat in, 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 the, in the fryer pan, if it's cast iron or whatever. You got to get it very, very high temperature. Because if you don't, the food will absorb the fat. Yeah, the longer it stays in there. And, and the food will be greasy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's got to be very high temperature so it cooks but doesn't absorb the fat, the oil, like a sponge. Yeah, okay. I saw the, uh, I saw your uh, instructions for popcorn last night too. On the stove, yeah. On the stove, you end up in the can, in, a, in, a, in the bucket. Yeah, it was an audio, can. it was yeah. an audio feel, yeah. file. Yeah, yeah, well, the, because somebody else put something up there. Yeah, somebody um, um, put, uh, well, I just wanted to make people understand. They better use the right popcorn. Don't be using GMO. Shit. Don't be using GMO. Some Somebody, uh, some woman that uh, that um, posts very often says, yeah, Jiffy Pop. I go, that's yeah, shit. Come on, there's chemicals in there and they come out of the bag, for God's sake. You know why? Because it's on the stove. And you gotta shake it. I says, there's crap in there, hydrogenated oils, and among other things. You don't want to. I'm talking about straight, pure, when I, loose popcorn. When I was a young man and didn't know any better, I think I once or twice used Jiffy Pop, and I burned it every time, because you can't tell. And and you know what? I mean, the aluminum blows up. You know what I mean? When I make popcorn the old-fashioned way. 
I don't have any duds left over. Yeah. When I when I when I used to use the other methods, I always used to have burnt kernels at the bottom that didn't bust. Not they kernels. just got black. Kernels, kernels yeah, Thank not you. Colonel Sanders. They're just kernels. Okay. Kernels of corn, and um, it's like carrots of a diamond versus Bugs Bunny's carrots. <laughs> but yeah, any how but, many carrots is that? Uh, any onions? I saw that on a cartoon. The person had a ring with, with like big carrots on their finger. Ah. I saw that. All right, so um, the uh, the audio. I'm not going to go through it here. The audio is on the uh, Facebook group. Um, Everything is food, yeah. which is our group <clears throat> because we are foodies too. We're not just into politics. Um, okay, Hall of Shame. All right, got you in there. Uh, of course, there are many, many products and people you can put in the Hall of Shame. I mean, I have an aqua I have an aquarium at home. Um, um, I only have it for this very large goldfish that grew from a little tiny 10 cent comet oh. and is now very large, huge. I named it Klaus after the talking goldfish on the cartoon American Dead. I use the water for for uh, watering and fertilizing my plants at the mm -hmm. same time because I, I read this article online ever since then I'm using aquarium water. I also soak my air plants in the water, Talantias. Okay, uh, the filter, the bubble up filter is made by a company called Lee. L E E. Don't buy from them because oh. everything they make, the plastic, is so fragile and thin it'll snap like a pretzel. I had a, I have to use a, a wooden clothespin to keep the um, the silicone uh, uh, air tubing with the air stone in the filter itself. I have to use a clothespin because the plastic part that holds it. It was so incredibly fragile Gone. that it snapped. And it's like, you know, and the prices never go down when they cut corners and use cheap, flimsy materials, Dr. Bill. And never Fed, go down. The Fed does not like it when prices go down. But the quality they of the... They make sure they stay. But, if the, but the quality of the American product goes down. Well, I don't know American or whatever, but the point is... Uh, we will never have prices go down in America. That's this is, for sure. This is all part of, I think, a plan to just make the poor and middle class miserable in the United States. And this is perfect. Oh yeah, because we have to uh, compete with the rest of the world. You Why? See, as far as standard of living is concerned. What about uh, Northern Europe? The people are pretty happy there, I hear under their their version of of capitalism mixed with socialism right they're pretty content well so yeah so far you know because you know health care and uh education are rights they're not privileges but the big and the rich are taxed properly the big corporations prefer selling overseas than they do here okay so they can give two shits about whether americans can afford that's correct. To buy their product or not. They certainly do not do the Henry Ford thingy. I got to pay my people enough so they can buy my product. I don't care about that. They don't care about that. Okay. The persecution of the poor oh. on welfare by Republicans. Yeah. A uh, gentleman uh, contacted me from Bergen County, New Jersey, Harold. Uh, and... Um, he couldn't find a job, and uh, you know he went to school a couple times. A lazy bum. He went to school a couple times. You know, it's a tech school. They told him there were um, um, in-demand occupations on the government website. And uh -huh. he, he thought he was going to get that rewarding new career. He did it twice. Nothing was in demand. Nobody wants to hire people fresh out of school, entry level. Everyone wants experience, five years plus experience, plus the diploma. Companies are nitpicky. Don't believe Republicans when they make it sound like there's plenty of jobs out there. There's not. So Harold 
had to go on welfare, you know, he had to apply, food stamps, uh, well, because his unemployment ran out, the federal extensions ran out. So he went on social services, and of course they made it, made his life miserable, like they make everyone else's life miserable. Mm. You know that for this, for the, um, I don't know what type of rent subsidy he gets, but Chris Christie, I mean, the, the, the Republican-run state of New Jersey is making him write down that he's continuing to look for another cheaper apartment. He has to write down seven, no, I'm sorry, no, um, he has to write down five searches. He has to write down five searches. Now, where are you going to find a low-cost apartment in this region of Bergen County, New Jersey, in the 21st century? We are a suburb of New York City. Where is he going to find a cheap apartment unless he goes into a dangerous ghetto, high-crime ghetto? Where is he going to find it? And he's Can got we all say Patterson? So you want... Camden? So you want, you want a... A white guy, Harold, to give up his garden apartment, his studio garden apartment, in a safe, clean neighborhood, and you want him to go move into a, a vermin-infested, high-crime, crack house ghetto just to make very rich Republicans happy, to make uh -huh. the big, fat, piece of shit Chris Christie in Trenton, New Jersey happy. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think Harold should put himself in harm's way. And uh, oh, and also Harold, in order to get his food stamps and cash assistance and whatever, he's got an. He first they told him he could put down three job searches per work day, not counting Saturday and Sunday. All right, that was a pain in the ass, but. He was able to do it per day, per work day. Three, what the hell? three, sir, three companies. Now, now the um, the manager of the caseworkers sits him down. He's white. She's black. Sits him down and says, "Oh, three searches per day. This doesn't show seven hours of job searching. Or you you got to submit seven per day." So Harold says, seven per day? I'm not even getting money to put gas in my car. How the hell am I going to drive around for seven hours a day looking for a job? I'm not, I'm not spending seven hours a day riding around. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit. So I told Harold to call the, uh, the main office that oversees this woman. Uh, it's at 60 State Street, Hackensack, New Jersey. It's, a, it's the unemployment office, but they have a section called uh, Workforce uh, um, um, that's connected with the state for people on social services to make sure they're looking for a job. You know, that's an awful lot. Seven searches per day. Thank you, Bill Clinton. And Newt Gingrich. How the hell, how could anybody prove that they're looking for a job for seven hours a day? How could you prove it? It's like somebody working off the books, like a go-go dancer collecting tips. Tell them the con uh, first contact his congressman and uh, then later yeah. on his senator. Well, Harold spoke to somebody at 60 State Street and they said, well, of course you can't prove how many minutes and hours somebody t takes to look for a job. The, the, the state just wants to see that you're looking. That's correct. So, so this caseworker, this black caseworker, he told me her name was Giselle, she's, she might be busting Harold's balls because he's white. Nah, I don't even go there. Because he went you off on her. To. He said if I wasn't Caucasian, don't even have to do that stuff. It's you know, all in the. It's of all course, she got mad at him. It's all in the mechanism. Thank you, Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich. They put in effect 1996. They changed welfare as we know it. You must work for your stipend now. Now we're in an economic situation where there aren't any jobs. 
So that doesn't help, does it? No. Okay. And what about so now we're in the catch twenty two? And, and what about the, the workforce program where the government gives people four thousand dollars to go back to school uh -huh. and you see all these commercials on T V, all these tech schools, you know, with the girl dancing around, booging, oh, get an exciting new rewarding career. Blah, 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 blah. You know, health care and this and that. Hey, if nobody wants to hire entry level people out of there's your problem. You and know? Where, well, what good it, you, are these courses? Uh, you know, going back and having a student loan that's another thing. People who have astronomical well, student hey, loans. The to government pay off. and the banks got together, and uh, students uh, have a bigger uh, 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 payback rate than other loans. Because it's a sure thing, baby. And they can't go bankrupt and get rid of it yeah. either. But these are the same students that thought that their career, that they have to pay so much money back for, was in demand. Not only is it not in demand, but well, if it happens to be a, if there happens to be a demand, these companies are very picky. They want years of experience nobody wants to train an entry-level person well they all want years of experience it gets back to the situation it's the system it has to be changed you got to get the people out of there that uh, are doing you bad what well, you know marco rubio go bernie bernie sanders decided to run right yeah go bernie hold on shillelagh my good luck shillelagh bernie sanders I, I give you a blessing from my, my good luck, Blackthorn Shillelagh. All right, go ahead. We, Mark Rubio. Mark Rubio yesterday. The he guy says, that looks like a, do, a, a says, doofus, dork, doofus. He says the people in charge in Washington are bad for you. He's one of them in charge. Well, you know what? what he, he is right about the people in Washington being yeah. bad for you, but it's not Barack Obama. But it's, 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 it's not Elizabeth, it's not Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. It's it's the Republicans that screwed up everything. It's him. It's him. I mean, he don't get it. What the, the thing is they criticize a man that really helped the poor and the middle class a tremendous tremendously. Obamacare is a huge help for the people. The man yeah, could have been better. The man, it could have been better. It could have been the single payer yeah. uh, universal health care. But you know what? Compared to other presidents, he did a damn good job, one of the finest, I, I, honestly, compared to them. The Republicans don't want to give you anything, but the Republicans have no solution. They also have, they don't <clears throat> give him credit for the certain things that he did and was able to do. No, they won't give him credit. No, they won't give him credit at all for that sort of stuff. Anyway, forget about everything you've heard, people. There is no trickle down in economics. It wasn't allowed to work. It could have worked if, no. jo if jobs weren't outsourced. How would it work? You're still, you're still deferring to the rich in trickle down. Well, they would have. Who do you think's money is going to trickle down? They would have to trickle it. Instead of pissing I on I know, you, but you're still piss. allowing them to have all of this money to trickle down. Well, it's like, uh, well, it's not like the uh, the president of um, Papa John Pizza who said, I am not obligated to share my company's prosperity with, with the employees. If you had decent people in Washington, you'd have a law that would say, hey, Mr. Papa John. Yes, you are. Yeah, I should have wrote his name down. You know? It's not even and Italian. That's how easy it is. It's not even Italian. But anyway... He, uh, he, he refused to give his employees health care, just like many states have rejected Obamacare because they don't give a shit if their, their poor has health insurance or not. Guess who uh, also said the same thing that the Papa John Jumboloni said? Who? J.P. Morgan. Said the same thing. Doesn't surprise me. Another greedy scumbag. In the 1800s. They're all... They, listen. They should all be put to death by pickling. It has to be a very slow... Well, it's too late for J.P. Morgan, but you know. has to be a very slow death. What about the old man Rockefeller is on his sixth heart transplant? whoop de do. He just won't die. I, I guess he's at the top of the list for getting hearts. Old man Rockefeller. Hey, money does certain uh, funny things, doesn't it? 
all of a sudden you grease the right palms you're the first person to get a heart yeah. but but that means that that's five hearts his body rejected five hearts but the point yeah well you know why because he's he evil heart because he right. has not right that's right Dick Cheney is another one listen what you have is siphon up to the top what do you think? 1% or 20%? 20. 20% 20 economics. There, there is no trickle down. It's all a lie. It's the devil's economics. Siphon up economics. Da -da -da -da. All right. Now, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Whew. This is a this is a, a, a fast and furious Cinco de Mayo show. Cinco de Mio. Yeah. Well, this is an unfortunate little tidbit here. Governor Christie did not react with fury or disappointment after learning Friday that Fort Lee police and firefighters and school buses packed with children were all unwitting victims in an illegal political payback scheme allegedly carried out by three trusted associates. Christie's first reaction was a sigh of relief about himself. Today's charges make clear that what I've said from day one is true, the governor stated in his first of his victory lap dispatches on Twitter. Then came this. I had no knowledge or involvement in the planning or the execution of this act. But the long-awaited findings by the U.S. Attorney, Paul J. Fishman, did not produce the long-awaited triumph for Team Christie. While prosecutors did not produce any evidence clear, excuse me, that Christie had any role in the conspiracy to punish Fort Lee Mayor Mark Sokolich. He has no role because he eats all the roles. By closing Go ahead. Sorry about two that. access lanes to the George Washington Bridge, the fog of scandal still hovers over Christie's pursuit of the presidency. Yep. The issue remains a significant threat to Christie's brand and especially to his hope of regaining some of the momentum he lost after the scandal erupted and quickly entered the national con consciousness in January 2014. He can't even turn New Jersey around. He wants to be president of the U.S. For one thing, Fishman's investigation virtually assures that the story will continue to unfold throughout this year and possibly Bill into 2016. Now, I don't think I have it here, but Wildstein, you know, his top aide, has pleaded guilty. Oh. The woman, Bridget, calls him a liar and says she didn't do anything. Well, what about the stupid email? Time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. So anyway, those three, those two now, well, Wildstein, he's already, he's already turned, so. But those two are still up for, uh, Somebody's got to squeal on Christie. That's the problem. Me, They're not doing it. Let me tell Christie's you. Christie's going to take care of Wildstein. Let me tell you something. Okay? Nobody is going down and putting their neck on the chopping block without without ratting out Christie and taking him down too. Nobody's going to take take well, the Wild heat. Wildstein just did it. Then he put the blame on himself. Why? Instead of why are they? Why are so many New Jersey politicians kissing Christie's big fat ass? I don't understand why. 
Who knows why they do it? I really don't. I mean, when they, when they have so much dirt on Christie, if they wanted to blow the whistle, they can. You know? So. An East Tennessee school district served years old pork oh. to students. Tennessee. For lunch. Oh, really? Oh, it sounds like a Republican thing. And is now implementing new food handling procedures. Ugh. Poisoning children. Well, hey. Reagan wanted to call ketchup a vegetable. Well, because they're not rich children. That's why they don't care. If there was, if there was their kids, they would be eating organic... Uh, Philly mignon? Organic sirloin chips, uh, food cooked by by a private chef. Uh, you know, I'm talking about these filthy rich congressmen, senators, and governors. <clears throat> Local media outlets report that the frozen meat had dates of 2009 to 2011, and was served to students in the Hawkins. County District on April 22. No sicknesses have been reported. Director of Schools Steve Starnes says a new inventory system went into effect last Friday. All current frozen items were inventoried and outdated items were discarded. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, we don't have time for a biggie here, so no. let me just let me just change the pace a little bit and get it. The only spacecraft ever to orbit Mercury ended its four-year tour with a crash landing on Thursday. Where did it crash? Into Mercury. So it's it's burned up. It's NASA's Oh, wait a minute, we might not be burned up. NASA's messenger plunged from orbit as planned. It's too hot to go retrieve it. Mercury is, will incinerate you. Yeah, that's true. And slammed into the sun's closest planet at 8,750 miles per hour. Can you expect to find anything left? <laughs> oh, Creating man. a crater an estimated 52 feet across. Messenger, which began orbiting Mercury in 2011, circled the planet 4,105 times and collected more than 277,000 images. Well, that, you know, Mercury is a very beautiful planet. I, I have a, a, a very vivid large photo of Mercury on the uh, in this science and environment album of the Newsletter Censored Facebook page and it is a beautiful planet. Uh -huh. It really is, but you don't want to be near it. <laughs> I thought it was gaseous and you know well, most of our planets cloudy and you most, can't see most nothing. are gaseous. Most like of Venus them are. And Mercury, you know? Well, uh, Uranus. Uh, well, or Uranus, okay? Myanus, Uranus, Uranus, uh, Saturn, uh, Jupiter, or as the Spanish say, Jupiter. Jupiter. Uh, most of them are very gaseous. You know, and. Oh, well, when uh, I eat my bean soup, I get a little gaseous too. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mars is not. Mars is nah. solid, like the Earth. But uh, but anyway, uh, I also got I also posted a vivid photo of a galaxy that makes our Milky Way galaxy look like nothing. Well, have you ever seen the uh, comparisons between our sun and some of the other suns? Like Betelgeuse. Well, Betelgeuse is even smaller than one of the baby suns that we and our sun, know of. And our sun is a speck next a to speck Betelgeuse. Of Betelgeuse, yeah. yeah. Incredible. And, and you know, there's, there are many planets, there are more planets out there that have similar atmospheres to Earth than you think. 
from that too. So, you know, it's a big mystery out there, man. I, I watch Ancient Aliens and it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Do you go with the scientists or do you go with the Bible? Is they're neck and neck. Well, let me put it this way, first of all. Not that I'm choosing sides here, but the point is, if you if you go with the Bible, you better understand what the Bible says, not this nonsense that most of these so-called Christians are some come up with. That the earth is only 6,000 years old. Well, not that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about why the universe was created. Why, yeah. There was a reason for it, according to the Bible. Is that for the reproduction of God reproducing himself? Well, that's what's going to happen. In, in reproducing himself, he's creating other gods. And they will eventually go out into the universe Populate. and cor and and correct these wrongs that are uh, the planets are in right now. The, the, as the Bible says, the the creation is in travail, Tohu. like a woman who's pregnant. Tohu and Bohu. Yeah, like Mars and etc. Mercury and Venus. And these are all Tohu and Bohu. We should use. They will be they will be cleaned up and uh, at. The, the reproduction process will continue. We should use those words. Tohu and Bohu Productions. You gave me an idea. I just have to know how to spell them. Tohu. T-O-H-U. Bohu. B-O-H-U. They are Hebrew. H-U. H-U. T-O-H-U. B-O-H-U. Yeah. Cool, so man. Cool, I can really dig that. It's I can not B.O.B., I'll bring your own bottle. It's not that. Bring your own bottle, bring your own booze. Okay, we're going to take a lunch break, and you'll be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative's uh, Bible Verses uh, to, to show some evidence uh, of how you can defeat a conservative. Uh, followed by William H. Morrow III, William Hamilton Morrow, our a voiceover artist and his promo and commercial and words of wisdom. Ooh. Happy Cinco de Mayo uh, once again. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. 
Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Amoro III, for your uh, doing promo and your words of wisdom. And also, hopefully, you learned something when you saw those Bible verses. Um, you could hit the pause button um, and read it. Now, what we, what myself and uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman were discussing off the air was, you know, we talked about the um, the, the the modern, I mean, the the recent trend of uh, police brutality, racism, and uh, murder by the police of unarmed people, particularly blacks, and also uh, persecution of uh, the poor and common folk of all races that either protest or if you happen to be homeless, but mostly black people. Uh, the thing is that no one in a position of authority, including politicians, no one is being held accountable for their actions. No checks and balances. No one is being held accountable for anything. And it's almost like people are just getting away with murder, literally. They do. And that's what we were talking about. You know, and, uh, and that goes all the way up to Congress, Senate, governors, not just the police. No one is being held accountable. So it's almost like these people are above the law. Well, like the the, the senators and the congressmen and the, the president and uh, the big companies and Alec and etc. They don't like the law, they change it. That's all. And then they're not guilty of the criminality anymore. They did it with Glass-Steagall, they did it with welfare as we know it, they did it with all different kinds of laws. So it's a dictatorship then. It's they don't like it. It's fascism. It's a di dictator totalitarian corp corporate dictatorship. Huh. Oligarch. Run by the elites. You know, they, 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 they take rules that were originally put there to protect we the people to be fair and they change it to be unfair mm -hmm. and favor them to allow them to do anything they want. That's right. So. Very nice. Uh, I, 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 I thank all you Americans out there that not only did not bother to vote this past November 4th, 2014, but also the lunatics out there in the red states down yonder, in Demdar red states, the teabaggers for voting in the demons, the, 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 uh, the demons in the flesh. I thank all of you because you asked for it, you got it. You know who they say yeah. started the teabag movement? Centelli on CNBC. You know that nut that occasionally goes off on a tangent. I don't like him already. No, I don't he, like his. Nobody name. liked him because he's a he's a mouthpiece for uh, the rich and corporations. He's a corporate whore, is what you're trying to say. Well, but the point of it is that people say he's the one who the Tea Party began to rally around and, and gave birth to. Wasn't aware of that. I thought it came out of well, uh, more uh, political uh, uh, using the area. using the uh, the Boston Tea Party name for a bunch of evil people, evil haters, racists, greedy, using the, uh, the Boston Tea Party name does not, is not befitting what these people really are. Because well, the Boston... Because all do that all the time. The Clear the Skies Amendment. Citizens United, the Citizens Clear, United. Clear Skies Amendment. That's they all it. sound positive. That's it. What I'm trying to say is the... The colonists, during that incident of the Boston Tea Party, they were simply freedom fighters that were going up against King George of England. They were they were good 
people, the colonists. These tea baggers today, the Tea Party of today, the right wing uh, conservatives are not good people. So by using the Boston Tea Party name is very inaccurate. Yes, but like yes, Reverend Bill said, yes, yes, yes. they like using pleasant names for their evil schemes. Mm -hmm. Clear skies. The devil and, as an angel of light. The devil as an angel of light. Satan as an angel of light. Of course the Clear Skies Amendment is not about clear skies. Mm -hmm. Of course Citizens United is not about uh, uh, doing good for the people at all. Did you put up that uh, photo yesterday of well, was New York in like 1973 or something? All fog and mist. Smoggy, and yeah. Smog, and then uh, recently air pollution. Yeah, yeah. This is what uh, this is what good regulations does. It was about promoting regulations on companies. Yeah. Yeah. Regulations are there for a reason. They do nothing but good. And they hold corporations accountable for their actions. Just like the politicians today are not held accountable. Uh, but particularly the Republicans. And the police are not held accountable. And the military personnel, mm. they do something um, uh, underhanded. They're not held accountable. Um, there's Dick Cheney, George W. Bush, they are not right. held accountable. The FBI, the government, is, uh, uh, they're, they're not held accountable for persecuting uh, 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 Middle Eastern Americans. Mm. Because of 9-11. You know, we're not supposed to profile well, gee whiz, 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudis. How come we're still friends? Yeah. With, you know, Saudi Arabia is no innocent bystander in all of this. They are Sunnis. Saudis? Which is the same as ISIS, which is oh, the really? same as Al-Qaeda. They're not Shiites? The same, no. Iranians are Shiites. I didn't know that. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yeah, but the United States, they keep pouring money into that ah. country, just like they keep on giving the wicked uh, Benjamin Netanyahu God knows how much money he gets every year over in Israel. But anyway, um, let's sink our teeth into these readings. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders came from a poor background. Oh, like Richard Nixon did as many of us have. He saw inequality and became a socialist. That's good, that's good. As such, he favors the governments of Scandinavia. So do Norway I. Norway. So do I. Has a population of 5 million. Denmark, 6 million. Sweden, 10 million. Even Iceland, I would say, is a Scandinavian country. It is owned by, I think, Denmark originally. Does he really think any of these countries could handle the social problems that our country of 320 million faces every day? Including the presence of about 11 million people that are here illegally? I'm sure they can, they, because they tax the rich appropriately. And how about jobs? <laughs> when Sanders moved to pristine Vermont, he witnessed out-of-state rich people move in to buy out farms and dairies. Now the only thing Vermont is known for is maple syrup no, and Ver teddy bears. No, Ver no, you dumbasses. Ben and Jerry's too, but that's. <laughs> but Vermont has many fantastic local organic farms. Vermont is a a beautiful state. I've been through there. It's a great state. It's a great progressive state. Yeah, that's why they elected a socialist. Right, exactly. Well, where's <laughs> Bernie originally from? He, uh, he does have a. Say. He does have a. He said just from a poor background. Okay, that's okay. It doesn't matter where, where he's from. 
as long as he's American and he can run for office. <laughs> for many years, referring to an assertion as the big lie has been severely criticized as equating the person telling the lie to Hitler and the Nazis. That is simply wrong. The so-called big lie is not a political philosophy, it is a tactic. Unfortunately, the right wing is very adept at this practice. For example, they offer up lies about death panels, President Obama not being an American, Hillary Clinton causing the deaths in Benghazi, although seven panels have found that she was not responsible and climate change, science being a hoax. The current biggest lie is that the Republicans, who have blocked almost every program proposed by the administration that would help the economy, the middle class and the poor, now say they care about these people. <laughs> and about such things as unemployment and income inequality. The GOP presidential candidates, the House Speaker, the Senate Majority Leader, Committee Chairman, and other elected officials engage in this practice, and it's a disgrace. Sadly, when these lies are constantly repeated by right-wing radio and television hosts, they are believed by many who either don't have access to other forms of communication, refuse to accept, access such forms, or simply want to believe the worst. What is especially sad is that for fear of being tarnished themselves, many right-minded people and politicians have been afraid to stand up and call out the tactic for what it is. In the coming presidential, and congressional campaigns, we can expect the right-wing attack machine to use the big lie mercilessly. And they do it often, often, constantly. They have already started. Um, um, yeah, like calling Social Security an entitlement over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a Nazi... And that it's going broke! It's a Nazi Germany style <laughs> lie, repeating the lie over and over, and that it's going broke, lie again. Yeah. It's not an entitlement, it's bought and paid for. We the people own it. Since we were just discussing Bernie, I dedicate this Cinco de Mayo show to Senator Bernie Sanders, new candidate President of the United States in 2016. Promising to fight obscene levels of income disparity and a campaign finance system that is a real disgrace. Independent Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders said on Wednesday that he will run for president as a Democrat. Well. In an interview with the Associated Press, Sanders confirmed his plans to formally join the race today. The self-described democratic socialist enters the race as a robust liberal alternative to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, exactly. And he pledged to do more than simply raise progressive issues or nudge the former Secretary of State to the left in a campaign in which she is heavily favored. Bernie Sanders is a tough cookie. People you, should not underestimate me, Bernie Sanders said. You, you're damn right. He is a tough cookie and they they ain't seen nothing yet. And, and let me tell you something. I was I was debating who would be a great running mate. I think I think of Dennis Kucinich, 
of Ohio would be a good choice. There's only uh, one. Elizabeth Warren? That's correct. Why? Because she's a woman? She's a woman and she is liberal. Yeah, but... A progressive. Yeah, but you don't, you don't think a... Um, a Kucinich, a Kucinich or a Jesse Ventura will put Bernie over the top? Jess, Jesse would definitely put, put Bernie over the top. Unfortunately, you give Jesse too much. Jesse is a local phenomenon. He is not a countrywide figure. Yeah, but he knows, he knows, it doesn't matter what he knows you know. this, where the source of all the corruption is. You don't know, it, it's not a matter what you know. It's a matter of what you can put together to convince people to vote for you. And that, of course, takes money. As the system is set up. So these, whoever is going to be his running mate, Mr. Sanders and so-and-so, already have a tough, tough nut to cut, crack. Okay? They have a tough, tough nut to crack, but he sure raised a lot of money in the first 10 days. The Cokies are dead at promising a hundred million dollars. So? To the final uh, guy that's going to run against the Bernie. Well, because they don't, they they don't want a Bernie Sanders to win. Well, of course because, not. Because then they would pay their fair share in income taxes. Oh God! Or else, <laughs> they'd have to bring all that money back to the United States and have it taxed too, that they're hiding offshore. Oh yeah! Oh, the patriotic Republicans! You gotta love them. And create jobs in America instead of in and Bangladesh. What a, what big lies surrounding them! What hypocrisy! The real, they claim to be real Christians. They claim to be real patriots. Oh, nothing but lies, lie after lie after lie. Of course, Governor Christie will run for president. He has propped up the state's wealthy and ruined our middle class. He vilifies the public worker and continues to break all of his promises. He spends virtually no time in New Jersey. No, he's about him. He promotes himself. He has burdened the taxpayers with legal bills, plus security and transportation costs, without solving any of New Jersey's problems. Yeah, you need a lot of fuel to ship that big fat body around. Soon enough, of these outsiders will discover the real crystal. But if they buy into it, oh, outsiders, okay. they might just get what they deserve. Well, here in New Jersey, we got what we deserved, even though I didn't vote for Christie ever. You know, uh, I, I voted for Barbara Bono, but um, I think she. Uh, she might have heard herself in the very first question from Christine Johnson is what is your plan for New Jersey what is your initial agenda what is your plan and she was a little like Ralph Cramden she had no plan come on she had a plan yeah she did but she didn't answer her. I got a plan right off the bat to undo a lot of the stuff that Christie Well, that's did. what she should have said. Absolutely. Instead of getting nervous. Yeah. She got nervous, you know. I could uh, start with the goddamn rebates. Give it back to the elderly and the, the disabled. And also pick choosing a lieutenant governor as her running mate was a, a female uh, 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 minority female lieutenant governor having two women running as a team no 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 state in America is ready for that yet to have an all-female um, political team running well then, certainly then, then, the uh, yeah. the religious nuts are not because the religious nuts well, will draw will bring out uh, Paul uh, that women should be silent in the church well no they I should was learn uh, from their husbands. I was thinking of uh, people just taking care of their own, like, you know, like a racial thing or a gender thing. People just taking care of their own and not being all inclusive. That was my concern about that. Uh, that's not, that, that, that's not going to stop the, the Republicans from voting for it. 
the Republicans will not they may if it's their woman all right, right. just to gain other votes voting for a woman okay because they know it's time if it's if it's like a, but, a Fox say, News a, bub, a babbling idiot from Fox News a chick in the in the Republican worldview a woman is a second class citizen well yeah because they're right wing uh, r radicals they're, they they don't recognize women as being equal to men remember in the Garden of Eden it was Eve who was seduced not Adam but she suckered Adam Eve, that's correct she gave to Adam and said eat and instead of standing up to her he said okay so he, so Adam was the first pussy whipped yeah. uh, man there you who, go. Li who listened to Eve despite God's uh, command and Eve was so there's the, uh, and Eve was the first female to be duped by a a male a, ma a masculine type figure like Satan Satan has no sex but he but angels Satan, have no but sex. Lucifer was not he was a serpent he, he he appeared as a serpent I'm talking about when he was the morning star in heaven he was not female he's not a female nor a male God has no sex Neither do angels. So what you're saying is all these Renaissance artisans who made uh, images of the angels being male, mm -hmm. wearing a suit of armor, like soldiers did at that time, they were just, just came off the top of their heads when they, they, they did, made these images. They did things as a human. They Because they, everybody makes the people of the Bible, or the the characters of the Bible look like them. That's correct. A, a, a black Baptist church, I saw an image of Jesus, he was black. When I was in Venezuela many years ago, statues of the Virgin Mary, they were, they were, they were brown skinned Latinas. There you go. Uh, and it goes on and on. European artisans make Mary and all the disciples look, have blonde hair, blue eyes, and very light skin. They were all very light Caucasian looking. They so, were Jewish. Right. But you tell that to the Italian artisans yeah. who made it. So what I'm saying is everybody thinks that their people, they're all self-righteous. They think that their people are number one. You their people are the best. Everybody else is be beneath them. And yeah. they make God and uh, every all the characters of the Bible look like them. Instead of God making man in his image, man has made God in his image. Well, I just want to say something I learned last night on the documentary. Huh? Did you know it was the stinking, lousy Pope at that time, in the early, early years of the Roman Catholic Church, that ordered for the uh, the great library of Alexandria, be Egypt, destroyed. for the books to be burned? Correct. You, you know how much scientific knowledge was in that library? But it was against the religion knowledge. But it turned back the clock technologically in terms of knowledge, in terms of science, in terms of everything. It turned back the clock tremendously on mankind. That's correct. We also went through a dark period once upon a time. Right. The During dark, the, uh, the Dark Ages. Dark Ages. Well, after the Roman Empire fell, you had the Dark Ages, and then a after they came out a little bit, they became the medieval times, and then the Renaissance the Renaissance, period. yes, when knowledge bloomed. Yeah. Bloomed and freedom. And that's when all those artisans commissioned by the Pope Ruby. were making all these figures and everything, you know, and they they well, made everything look white, Caucasian. Thank you. Yeah, when the, these people were all Israelites. You know, 
So that's it. It, it, it. The Catholic Church burns the great library of Alexandria. I have struggled with this issue for nearly a decade. I fell in love with my best friend in high school. Oh, how touching. It was a lost cause because I'm gay. And he is straight. Yeah, you gotta have two to dance the tango. He experimented with me. Uh. But had no interest in a relationship. He went on to have a child with a woman. I moved away to college, dated others, even went to counseling, but I've never been able to stop feeling in love with him. Well, what, what can you do? The other guy is not gay. So many things make me think of him, and no feeling since has measured up. I now have a serious boyfriend of three years, whom I do love deeply. I've been up front with him about my first love. Up front? Boing. Who has been a great point of contention to our relationship. My boyfriend wants me to have no contact with this former love, which I really understand but it is tortuous for me. I feel like I can't talk about it with him because it's too upsetting. <laughs> now we are staying in my hometown for two months and my obsession is in overdrive. Oh boy. I want to see my high school love again. <laughs> He's going to be a gay stalker, it sounds like. I feel like it could help me move on if I could just talk to him. He ain't going to be able to pack that fudge, so he might as well pack it up, pack it in, and leave. Because going cold turkey hasn't worked. Cold turkey, huh? I, Call I, salami is more like it. I have no reason to believe he could ever love me. Oh, this is so touching. And thus I don't see it as a threat to my current boyfriend. <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to know is, one, whether I'm justified in wanting to see him. No. Number two, no. how should I approach talking about this to my current boyfriend? It doesn't matter. The, the guy that he's... he's What's the right word? Pining after? And number three. Is, is not gay. And <laughs> How I can free myself from this old love obsession. Get castrated. Get your, your balinis chopped off. Just let it go, man. And what about the person he's dating now? Is this a, um, a Dear Abby? Uh, Amy Dickinson. Amy, what does Amy Dickinson have to say? Your impulse to see the object of your obsession is understandable. You want to feed your obsession. But it isn't necessarily a safe choice. You say you don't have any reason to believe that your first love will ever love you back. And so... Seeing him is not a threat to your current relationship. But your obsession does not require any stimulation at all to thrive. No, it's it's platonic. It has to be platonic. That's it. He can he can hang out with him, have lunch or whatever, but it's platonic. The other man's not gay. Hence the last ten years of a one sided fascination threat to your current relationship. Yeah, of course. Whether or not you can connect with the other man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your obsession is a threat to the love object's current relationship and family. What's her name? Amy Dickinson? Dickinson? Asking if you are justified in wanting to see the object of your obsession is like asking an addict 
if he is justified in wanting a fix. Yeah, just one more time. One more fix. One more time. The addiction itself provides the justification for feeling, feeding, excuse me, the addiction. Given the long-term nature of this and how it has interfered with your life and relationships, you should pursue professional counsel again. On your own, and also with your current boyfriend. Gotta suck it up, gotta suck it up. It's the old saying, sometimes you gotta just suck it up. In my opinion, it is not wise for you to see the object of your obsession because of the likelihood that it will trigger, not ease, the intensity of your emotions. In therapy, you may learn that your obsession isn't really about the other guy, but rather about you and your connection to your sexuality and emotions. You know what they say? They say that the what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? The uh, fantasy is always better than the reality. Spock said that. Leonard Nimoy, the the pursuit, the pursuit of of something that you're thinking about, you're, the fantasy is always yeah. more pleasurable than actually having it. Exactly. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Any time, any time I had a bug in my head about something, once I got it, it was like, eh, all right, okay, been there, done that, move on. And then until I get another bug in my head. It's absolutely true. The fantasy is always more exciting and intense than actually having it. That's what used to happen many times with women on the fetish sites. Yeah. And that's what made them fall into problems sometimes. And Spock because was, yeah. the fantasy was so alluring. Right. And, and Spock also said, it's not logical, but it, it is often true. And he's, he was right. I mean, uh, on dating websites in general, um, women, if you read women's profiles with online dating, many of them are loaded with fantasies of uh, what they think is the perfect romance or how, the perfect boyfriend or husband or, you know, they're... they're their concept of what a happy uh, love relationship is is very um, unrealistic often and chock full of fantasy mm. it's really and then they get dis disappointed and let down if it doesn't meet their expectations mm. you know so there's a lot of people like that All right, this letter is regarding a letter that appeared uh, about concerning Religious views deserve respect. Well, wow. and the answer to this uh, that letter is, though one must respect this well-written and compassionate letter, it is unfortunately necessary to disagree with what it says. Yeah, just don't push your views on other people. The writer recounts an incident in which a Muslim woman politely declined to shake his hand. He was not offended, for he understood that her cultural and religious beliefs required her to decline to shake the hand of a man. Yeah, well, they're 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 also not supposed to use symbols, like 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 the Christian and like well, mostly the Catholic Church does. Prohibit. The yeah. the writer was following an age-old custom of accepting a religious dictum without question. You respect that and you, and you just, that's it. You let it go. But this kind of blind obedience has in good part changed. Today we have more and more frequently when subject to religious law decided that we would not accept it unless it was made clear that there was a good reason for the commandment. 
In doing so, we have added religious views to the same kind of examination that is required for all laws and commandments. For example, why must I always drive on the right side of the road? <sighs> this guy, it's not his place to analyze other religions. You just accept it, respect it, and let it go. The answer is that free choice would, in this case, lead to innumerable disasters. Well, this guy ought to go to Italy and, 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 and so many other foreign countries where there's no rules of the stinking road, man. You mean like the Autobahn in Germany? There's no, 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 not that. There's my no speed God. limit. No speed limit. These countries man, that have all these damn scooters. Let me tell you. Like Thailand and Bangladesh, you know. If you uh, go, if you go to a large city, eh, let's say India. Yeah, India too. Or even I right hear Rome has horrible traffic. Yes. You got everybody blowing a horn and cutting you off. You think it's a nightmare in the United States? You know, you should try going to some of these countries. What do you say? And uh, you, you, you start taking public transportation very quick. Also, why can't I sit in my backyard and play loud music at 3 a.m. in the morning? Because other people in the neighborhood are sleeping. You don't live on a farm out in the boonies, man. Because my neighbors need some sleep. Yes. So why should a Muslim woman refuse to shake a man's hand? Because he's trying to compare those two. A handshake with blasting music at 3 a.m. Stupid ass. The answer is that no longer can modern society permit religion to make commandments without a why. For to do so may encourage acts that are harmful to society. I am not acquainted with Muslim law, but the commandment in question would seem to be prejudicial to women. Some people don't shake hands for, for health reasons, you know. A companion to religious regulations that have forbidden a woman to be alone in a room with a man or drive a car or bear her head. So that's her choice, you see. If, if it's part of her religion, he has to respect that. He cannot, he cannot force her to shake his hand or to remove her garment from her head. You know what I mean? It's almost like he's pushing his views on this woman. Well, I think what he wants to do is, he wants to, uh... Get in her pants? He doesn't want the <coughs> governments to be making these views. No, governments should stay out of religion completely. Completely. Otherwise, the churches should pay taxes. If they want to stick their Pinocchio nose in politics, well, they ought to be, tax them. They ought to prove their God first. Which is not going to happen. And then pay taxes. Well, then, 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 okay. then, okay, so then just simply keep, mind your own damn business when it comes to politics. Well, they certainly have not done that in the United States of America. Usually, when something becomes law, there has to be some, some logical base for it. You really? To, yeah, you can't just make up a law based on what you fantasize about or what you think is reality. Can Your we all say Citizens United? Perception. Well, where corporations and the rich can give any amount of money to their pro uh, candidate through a pack that they want. And, and, and thus buy elections. Was there some need for that? No, that, 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 that encourages corruption. Well, you just said there's some kind of need that sets making a law in effect. No, no, you I'm know? saying, I'm saying, uh, well, that would be a, um, a dishonorable form of law. Well, wasn't it also <laughs> getting rid of Glass-Steagall? A dishonorable? But if, if a person, if a person wants to make a law based on some f fanatical religion, uh, you know, 
we and, already have and, a lot of them. You know, enforce other people's children to, well, we to already have a lot adhere of to it in school. You know, I mean, uh, there could be the kids could have atheist parents, the kids could have uh, a Hindu parents or whatever. You know, Muslim. Um, you can't. Everybody pays ta well. Everybody who's poor or middle class pays taxes in the United States. So you can't be interfering with the politics of a multicultural nation using religion. Well, they do. They're they're stupid, unproven. Oh, Dwight cultist Eisenhower religion. called them stupid too. He said they wouldn't dare touch Social Security and and unemployment insurance and stuff. And guess what? Well, they want to steal. I mean, just come come clean. They well, want to. Dwight Eisenhower said that they were stupid if they would. They would no, no political party would try to do that in the future. He said because I they do. they started giving them more and more of what they want. They gave yeah. into the right wing more and more, yeah. and as they did that, the right wing started taking more and yeah. more and wanting more and more. Yeah. And because they buy their elections, it's all about money. They they got their way. I mean. Uh, no one's held accountable for anything. So, yeah, they, they basically have purchased the right to control the United States. Uh, as far as religion goes, nobody has been able to prove that their God exists. So, therefore, your opinion against mine, against the other guy... Holds no water. It holds no water. Okay. Well, it. my book has got a hole in it. Yeah, my book has got a hole. <laughs> Sound like Elvis. It was supposed to be uh, 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 Ozzy, uh, the kid, Ricky Nelson. Oh. He's the one who sang that. <laughs> yeah, they they had one of those time life shows uh, on late at night, but all the all the uh, the people from. Uh, 50s, you know, everything after the big band era, the doo-wop, the early 60s, Motown, they, they showed them all. I saw a, uh, somebody put up a video on Facebook the other day about the last, I think it was a year, the last year of Elvis's life. And they interviewed all of his mafia, you know, that was around him, all the guys, yeah. and everything. Colonel and Parker, he is he still alive? Colonel Parker was a terrible, terrible tyrant. Oh, man. And a gambler. One time he lost $1.5 million at the roulette wheel. Of, of Elvis's cash? Well, who was making the money for him? You know, at the end there, Elvis's records weren't selling, uh, stuff like that. He had to be on tour to make money. That's why he played Vegas? When, you mean when he was all bloaty and everything? And Colonel Parker said to the Mafia, he said, look, there's only one thing important. That guy gets on stage. That's it. You wanted that money, man. Yeah, well, his... Elvis it, was pilled up, man. His, uh, he tried acting in movies, and he was, to me, I thought he was a great actor. He was good. I loved his movies, and I then eventually movie. that fizzled out, and uh, then his record stopped selling, and then he played Vegas. Yeah, he toured around. He, he ended up in Vegas, and he toured around. Uh, but, um, you know... Um, they were on amphetamines, they were on downers, they were yeah. on, you know... And not only he took them, the Mafia took them too, you know? There was like seven guys that were always around him, and Ginger, right. his last girlfriend. Now Priscilla, Priscilla. Priscilla was a, a, a substantially younger than him when he married her, right? Well, you heard what the uh, 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 what the hell's his name now? I forgot. His name just flew out of my head. The Duck Dynasty, the head guy. Phil. Phil. You heard what Phil said, didn't you? What? You should marry a woman that's fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen. What a stupid ass. You know, in many of those states, this is underage, baby. This is this is uh, 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 what is he, uh, statutory uh, rape. David Koresh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 one of the Mormon Jeez. gurus, uh, having sex with underage females. 
Oh boy, oh boy. And you know what? And these people get all the FaceTime too. They get the FaceTime. It's incredible. But anyway, uh, um, this um, running for president by Bernie Sanders, this should get a lot of a lot of what's coming out of the progressive movement onto, onto the mainstream <coughs> media. Hopefully. 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 And, and then if Elizabeth Warren throws her hat in. Addresses and, some of these problems, yes. You're definitely, definitely going to hear a lot about what's been going on with the elitists and the right wing in this country. You know, and in and, and the world, too. Um, a friend of mine up that um, um, in, in, in the um, Philippines, uh, I believe his name is Ron Palmera. Ron Palmera, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, from the Philippines, member of the uh, Zirkane Philippines, which is uh, exercise, uh, ancient warrior exercise Palavani organization that I, I practice. Uh, he sent me, uh, he posted photos last night of all the solar panels and uh, on where it is his where he lives uh, in his section of the Philippines. They're putting up so many solar panels. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, the Philippines is a perfect place for solar farms, you know, and uh, because it's, it's, it's hot, it's tropical. Uh, it's, uh, it's made up of sun, sun, sun. Yeah, it's over <laughs> over seven thousand islands, and uh, I mean, uh, you could you could probably not only produce enough electricity for the entire country, but have a lot left over to sell. If you're in the tropics, if you're near the equator, take yes, advantage but of it. Nothing in this stuff can happen. The Saharan Desert. The oil industry and the coal industry and the nuclear power industry, they don't let these things happen. Do you realize what a small part of the Sahara Desert, if that was yes. a solar farm, you saw the map? Yes, it, but it, these things don't get on the drawing board. I mean, uh, you know, now that the drought in California seems permanent, that Mojave Desert is going to grow. There's another excellent area for solar farms. You know, come on. Oh, well, and not the excellent for uh, desalinization and trees. Maybe. You know. Well, desalinization is the only way. It's a great way. It's been done in other countries, yeah, and I, well, San Diego's doing it. And, maybe uh, when the trees are in and the. the, 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 the the fields are growing and stuff, and the yeah. CO2 is going up, and the big papa, maybe then the rain yeah. will come back. Who you knows? Know. Who knows? You know? Now, did you know the Hedron Collider, <gasps> the atom spl uh, splitter in uh, in, Switz it up again. in Switzerland? They 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 uh, they got a new one replacing the old one. It's going to be 14 times more powerful. Uh, the Hedron Collider. That was it. The boson particle they call it. Boston particle? Uh, yeah, Boston, Boston, Boston. Yeah, uh, they said that... Uh, God particle. That particle. Um, it could... It could produce... Uh, it could solve the anti-gravity, you know, uh, uh, create devices that can hover using anti-gravity uh, or antimatter, and uh, it, 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 it could technologically push us ahead quite a bit. That's why they, they're using this Hedron Collider. They could use air vehicles and um, the other ones, those uh, the nano uh, trains where the, the uh, they're like off the track. They like electromagnetic? Yeah, yeah. Well they have those. Well you ain't seeing any of that stuff because of the three industries I just mentioned. Yeah. Oil, right. nuclear, well, they just brought the bullet train to one section of the we United don't have States. A bullet train. No, they we have an Acela that has to slow down to five miles an hour 
to go through certain portions of the track. So the, the bullet train of Europe and Japan, we do not have yet. We ain't gonna have and it. China has it too, I think. We ain't gonna have it. That's my point. I mean, just think of it. All these light rails, monorails, much better than taking a bus. Just think of all the traffic that will be no more. And, and, and people spending all kinds of money on, on a motor vehicle, having a car, and, uh, and what else, and pollution. Just think of all the problems that will be eradicated. Well, unfortunately, the people who make the laws do not think that way. Well, they're thinking as far as who is greasing their palms, Correct. right? Yeah. The most. What can I do for whom? And they will grease my palm. Yeah. Hey, you, uh, uh, if we give you this, this amount, would you forget about the whole green movement? Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Green. They'll say green. What's that? Money, I don't know money, any. Green, I know money, any money, green. Money, the only yeah. green. Yeah, the only green they know is the bribe. There you go. Money, hey. Yeah. That's it. Anyway, that's it. That's it. It's a wrap. Take a wrap. it easy. Have a, um, a pleasant Cinco de Mayo if you happen to be going out drinking and eating. Be yeah. safe. Don't drive drunk. Uh, young people won't pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, and uh, May is here. Just take a look. Yeah, at the today is a good uh, example. Flowers are out already. Over May Day. Uh, I think the tulips come first and the azalea bushes, azalea flowers and pansies. Which look like a little uh, like Groucho Marx. They have a face of a look like a man with a mustache. What about the hibiscus? And heavy eyebrow hibiscus. Yeah. Hibiscus and crocus. Yeah, they should be coming. They're out. They're out. Tulips. Hi no, hibiscus is a is a uh, warm weather. Is a warm climate. Oh, it's warm weather now. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the other one. Uh, I had a I had a bulb that died on me. Uh, hyacinth. Hyacinth. Didn't make it. It just didn't. It was in, in water. The roots. Maybe they're not they meant to. It got rotten. It got rot. Maybe they're not meant to be a water suspended plant. I don't think so. Because it rotted. And if it rotted, that meant, meant it was because of the water. Mm -hmm. So what idiot decided to sell to stick a hyacinth bulb in a little vase of water and sell it if it wasn't meant to be there. Ah. Anyway. Anyway. Take it easy. Or take it any way you can. Sink of the mire. <laughs> Say goodbye to these jabronis. So long, John, John Blurney. El Jabronios. El Jabronio. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.